Hey guys, it is Sarah in the house, literally in my house. Yeah, it's been a while and I just kind of wanted to make this video because I thought it was really important to be able to share something with you guys. Oh my gosh. So this week is actually National Eating Disorder Awareness Week and uh, I haven't been uploading any videos and I really wanted to upload a video for this week because I thought it was important to be able to share my story with you guys. Talking about an eating disorder is really, really hard to do. Um, a lot of people that have eating disorders don't really want to talk about it, don't like talking about it. It often happens so much behind closed doors. Um, a lot of times even your friends, your family don't know about it and it becomes this very secluded kind of mental mental fight that you have to deal with on your own. Growing up, I, I don't think I had any issues with eating. Um, I was actually a very healthy kid. I played a lot of sports. Um, I never had any type of focus on food. And I, I just had an overall pretty good childhood, I think. When I was about 15 or 16 years old, I actually joined part of a K-pop training group. Um, and being the only half American in that group, I consider myself to be a big boned. I have big hands. It was made evident from day one that I needed to lose weight. Um, having to hear that you have to lose weight and that you're not skinny enough at a very young age, it, it's, it does a lot to your head. Um, it makes you feel as if in some way you're not enough. When I was part of this group, I, I worked out a lot. I think there were some days where I did like four plus hours of cardio while I was trying to lose all this weight. And again, at a very young age, at like just 15 or 16, I would occasionally starve myself, restrict myself from eating. I actually lost a little too much weight. People used to call me Chupa Chups, which is kind of like a lollipop, like this lollipop. Yeah, because my head was so freaking gigantic but my body was so thin. And, you know, here's another picture. As you can see, my bones were literally protruding. You could see them clearly. Um, and I was extremely underweight. I think I was wearing like a size zero pants. And even at that time, I was still considered overweight. For some reason, society told me that I was not enough. And so I starved myself a lot of times only eating like a sweet potato a day um, and I began to lose a lot of love for myself and I think that was kind of the beginning of my eating disorder and it's kind of weird how eating disorders they don't just take one form it's not like you're you're anorexic and you're extremely skinny you can be anorexic and still be a normal weight anorexia doesn't just come in one form just as a lot of mental disorders don't come in one form. Um, even a lot of physical disorders that you can see oftentimes just don't come in one form. During this time when I was losing a lot of weight, I had actually gone through a breakup with my very first boyfriend. It was so devastating. I really had nobody to talk to. I began to seek out food as a way for me to cope with that stress um, from the breakup because I felt very alone at the time. Um, even though I was in this training group and so I began to instead of restricting all the time and not eating all the time I began to actually Overeat and binge it was kind of now that I think about it It's kind of weird how one eating disorder can take another form of eating disorder um, in a matter of weeks and so I began to binge and I, I gained a lot of weight um, and that eventually led to me leaving the group. I had no more control over my own physical eating habits. I say habits, but in reality, I do mean this disorder that really just took over my entire life. Um, and so I ended up leaving the group. At the ripe age of 18, I began to live by myself, um, actually with some roommates, but completely detached from my parents. I paid for all my bills, my rent, etc. And during that time, I became extremely obsessed over food um, and I began to form like an extreme binge eating disorder um, to the point where I would just like sit in my room, spend about three, four hours looking for 
food online to order to eat, eating that all in one sitting. So I would have like a pizza, fried chicken, something else, and then I would just eat that all by myself. It was a way for me to cope with things without really having to face them. Food became my only source of coping. And over time, I actually got to the point where I was about, I think, 75 kilos, um, and that was like maybe 75, 77 kilos. That was my highest. And God, I did not feel good about myself ever. Um, so I would, I would binge like one whole day, and then I would restrict for three days. I would not eat anything for three days, and then I would binge for for another whole day or two days, and then I would just not eat anything for three or four days. And it was a very bad cycle um, that I was going through. And you know, it's something that I wish I understood at the time. I didn't realize that I had this eating disorder. Nobody told me that I had this eating disorder because I never shared it with anybody. And I think that was the biggest downfall. Had I have shared it with somebody, maybe, maybe I would have gotten the help I needed a lot quicker. Um, and during this time, you know, I was really struggling with my body image. I would look in the mirror and then I would hate what I saw and then I'd stand on a scale and then I'd hate that number and then I'd move the scale over to a different location and then I'd stand on it again and then I'd hate the number and I would do this about about 30 times in the course of an hour to see if there was a change in weight. Like I would get so obsessed over the number on a scale when in reality I should have been dealing with the underlying issues and had I gotten the help that I needed I would have known to deal with those issues and that kind of brings me to today pretty much I've been through the scariest anorexic moments where I had this voice in my head that was telling me don't take that bite don't take that bite because I was so afraid of the calories. Calories are nothing. Calories can be delicious. To the other extreme of eating way too many calories and then hating myself for eating way too many calories and completely starving myself for the next few days, which is obviously not a healthy thing to do. And I think in this day and age, when we have so many role models to look up to on the internet, um, magazines, TV, it's important to understand that a lot of times these people have been edited. These, these women aren't perfect. I can happily say today that I am not currently fighting an eating disorder. Having been through these periods of time where my focus was really drawn to food, I know that at any given moment, an eating disorder can reappear in my life. The most important thing that I want to say for anybody dealing with an eating disorder or that has dealt with an eating disorder is in order to get better, you need a great support system. In order to get better, you need to understand that you're not alone and that there are people out there willing to hear you talk. Um, it's really important to address the underlying issues as to why these eating disorders happen and not to focus so much on the food aspect of things, you know? Um, and I, I'm happy to say that right now, I'm, I'm really enjoying life. I can eat Cheetos, or I can eat a carrot stick or Cheetos and not feel guilty about it because you shouldn't. Food is nothing but food. It's supposed to help you fuel yourself or you can just enjoy it like a bag of chips. What I found to be the most helpful thing to do is to just really balance my life out. If I decide to eat a bag of chips with, with a hamburger, then for dinner, I'll, I'll eat a salad instead. You know, it's not about restricting yourself, not allowing yourself to enjoy the deliciousness of hot Cheetos, but to understand that there is a balance. It's, it's like life in general. You can't just always have fun. You have to balance it out with the boring stuff, you know, the stuff that's like a necessity. You have to go to school. You have to go to work. 
but you also have to socialize. You always, you also have to meet up with friends and do the things that make you happy. That's life, man. You just have to find a balance and keep that balance. And that's why, because I worked out this morning, I'm gonna eat Cheeto. I'm treating myself for working hard. But there's nothing wrong with that. And I just wanted to let you guys know if you're suffering from an eating disorder or know of a friend that's suffering from eating disorder, um, or even a family member, you know, that's suffering from an eating disorder, there's always help out there. You can always visit nedaawareness.org. Visit a therapist because it's important to address these issues and really work towards making yourself feel better. Because having an eating disorder is not a small thing. It's a valid health issue that needs to be dealt with. If any of you have been dealing with an eating disorder or know of anybody dealing with an eating disorder, leave your comments below. I'd love to read them. Um, maybe I can offer you guys some support. I know this was definitely more of a serious video um, and for those that stayed to the end to watch this whole video, I really want to thank you um, and have a wonderful week.